Hey everyone, this is Hugh from Playglands Media bringing you another book review today. This time I'm looking at Headhunter by Michael Slade. This is a book that I have uh, quite a bit of history with, which I will get into uh, a little bit later on. But needless to say, this is a police procedural novel thinly disguised as horror. So if that's your thing, stick around and see what I have to say. If it's not, fuck off and wait for the next video. But with that said, let's get into another episode of So as I said, I have uh, quite a bit of history with this book. I actually first read this book way, way, way back in the sixth grade. So that would be 1989. Now, the reason I read this book in the sixth grade was because of the original cover. I found this book in a secondhand bookstore in Springwood uh, in the Blue Mountains. Um, I found this along with another classic horror novel called Chainsaw Terror, which I recommend if you want to read about uh, a Norman Bates type character cutting up women with a chainsaw and then having sex with their bodies, really entertaining stuff. But I saw the original cover to this, which uh, through the magic of editing is going to pop up on your screen right about here because I couldn't be bothered describing it. But if you look at this cover, this cover is absolutely phenomenal. And you see this, you're immediately thinking horror. It's graphic, it's dark, it's just a great, great cover. Now, when I initially read this book, I uh, have to say I was not particularly impressed with it. Um, I was probably too young to get into the nitty gritty of the police procedural stuff. And the killer's motivations and motives and it, it just didn't sit well with me and i was young i admit um so you know i read it put it on the bookshelf forgot about it occasionally would take out the cover and have a look at it because that's an awesome cover but then i found out that the author michael slade who um, isn't actually, in fact, the author. It's a pen name for a series of, or, or a, a firm, I should say, of criminal lawyers, uh, criminal attorneys who kind of got together and wrote this book, which is the first in a series of, uh, of novels. I uh, went back uh, in 2016 and released Headhunter Reimagined, which is this copy here. Um, adding new parts to the story, fixing up some plot holes, uh, refining the writing technique, so to speak. So I just finished this book. Um, I can honestly say that it was so long ago, I don't know what parts are new and what parts are not new. Um, but I really question whether or not it was even necessary to do this. I believe the only other author I can recall from recent memory that did this was Stephen King with his novel The Stand, which many people uh, argue is the best Stephen King novel uh, that he's written. I respectfully disagree. Uh, that was 1,000 pages of utter bullshit, which I'm never going to get that time back. But that's just my opinion, of course. I have other favorite Stephen King novels. Anyway, Headhunter. What's it about? It's about a headhunter. Yep, a serial killer who goes around uh, cutting the heads off of women, specifically women that have black hair, um, or in one case, a nun, because the habit looked black or something, whatever. Um, then he cuts their breasts, um, has sex with the bodies, and then the Royal Canadian Mounted Police have to find and apprehend him like a good police procedural. You have a lot of different characters in this book. The main character, of course, being uh, the clerk who was a former mounted police, but after a tragedy in which his wife and young daughter were killed, he went a little bit crazy, 
uh, but they bring him back in because he is apparently the best of the best of the best. Um, and then you have uh, these teams of one female Mountie and one uh, male Mountie, which um, it's it's said in the book that this was kind of like the Mountie Police used to be a boys club and letting girls in didn't sit right. Sorry, letting women in didn't sit right with a lot of them. So you have these teams and you get to see the kind of back and forth there. Um, you do get a lot of information on the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. You get a lot of good forensic information uh, in, the, in the pathology reports and things like that. You get some amazing uh, descriptions of Vancouver and uh, different areas in Canada where the book is set. So it's one of these books where you can tell that the, um, the authors, uh, I should say, not just Michael Slade is the pen name. Um, they really know Vancouver. They really know the town. They really know uh, a lot about Canada. And this is my biggest complaint with this book is that often there is just too much information. Um, when they are driving through the streets of Vancouver, we get to hear about every bridge, every tunnel, every street light, every street sign, every tourist attraction in epic detail. When the Canadian Mounted Police are likening the crimes to other real life cases, we get five pages about the real life case that ultimately doesn't lead anywhere because it's not connected with the cases that they are investigating of these women that are being beheaded. It's just too much. And I don't know if that stuff was added um, in, for the reimagined version or, or what, but it really bogs the story down and it slows the story down as well. It is fascinating, don't get me wrong. I love true crime, I love reading about that kind of thing, but when the, the crux of this book is trying to solve the case, and you're, you're bogging it down with unnecessary information about unrelated cases, it just kind of doesn't work. There's a voodoo angle here as well uh, with drug dealing uh, from New Orleans, uh, voodoo rituals, that kind of a thing, which is, it's interesting, it's fine, it's good. Now, the biggest issue with this book, the the, the thing that really kind of uh, tanks it for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad book by any stretch of the imagination, and I would recommend it to those who are fans of police procedural crime novels. The time jumps are insane. The, the time skips uh, go as far back as like 18, the 1890s, and then you get the 1950s, and then you get a, a weird transitional chapter set in Central, uh, in South America uh, in the 1960s, um, which ties in with the killer. And then it, it just, it jumps all over the place. Not only do you have to keep up with the years and the time jumps like that, but you have to keep up with the timestamps because it is meticulously timestamped. Each chapter will say uh, the location and then 8.05 p.m. And then the next one will be the location, 9.23 p.m. and so on. So you've, you've also got to contend with that. And that also happens uh, when you're jumping through the years as well, when you have the time jumps through the years. Very, very bizarre. Um, I don't really know what the point of it was, but uh, it's there in the book. Now, if you don't want a spoiler to the ending, please stop the video here and I will see you in the next video. But I do have to talk about the ending to this book because the ending to this book pissed me off. You... You do find out who the killer is. I'm not going to give that away. You find out through two of the worst characters uh, in, in the entire book, the clerk's wife and um, 
just a throwaway detective from the start of the book that kind of appeared at the beginning and then miraculously appears at the end. Okay, that's that's all good and well. The fucking killer gets away with it. These are supposed to be the special squad X. These are the, the cream of the crop mounted police that hunt the psychos. This whole book talks up how the Mounties always get their man and, and, and they, are the, they are the best of the best and, and they're led by this, this legendary mounted police. And ultimately it fucking means nothing because the killer gets away. So what was the fucking point? Why did I read this book? I, 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 don't know. I don't know. So there you have it. Headhunter by Michael Slade. Headhunter Reimagined. Uh, the cover art, let me just say, the cover art is not bad, but as you saw the original, the original is so much better. Well, it's not even the original. It's just the edition that I have. So there you have it. Uh, stay tuned for some more book reviews and whatnot coming up. And uh, as always, just enjoy the rest of the weekend, relax, and uh, read a fucking book, people.